Let's spend a little time talking about the saints. Hello everyone. Today, a discussion of the saints, using this book as a springboard to discussion. Here we have a hardback, hand-sized copy of The Lives of the Saints, illustrated, a thrift store purchase at my local Mennonite thrift shop. And as I am releasing this in the week in which Halloween falls, God willing and the river don't rise, uh, it's uh, nicely Halloween colored here. We have a black I assume that's black and not deep blue. A black uh, hardcover, some gold lettering on the front, and we have this orange. I don't know if it's showing in this light, but that's a um, pumpkin spice orange on the page edges, um, containing uh, saints days throughout the year with illustrations. Produced sometime around the turn of the current century, 1999. Most recent copyright. Um, as you may know, if you have followed my channel at all, I am a Protestant, a member of the Church of the Nazarene, and a prayer book Christian. Here we have the Book of Common Prayer and the... Um, 39 articles of the Anglican Church here at the end, if I can find it, does not have an article specifically about the saints or the intercession of the saints, but that is included in Article 22, titled Of Purgatory. The Romish doctrine concerning purgatory, pardons, worshipping, and adoration, as well of images as of relics, and also invocation of saints is a fond thing vainly invented. Okay, fond thing vainly invented doesn't sound too horrible. And grounded upon no warranty of scripture, but rather repugnant to the word of God. Okay, got a little darker at the end there. Um, so... Uh, Invocation of saints, the intercession, asking for the intercession of saints, not a uh, not a cool thing for the Anglicans. And some of the things the Anglican Church, the Church in England, did in compiling the liturgy that would become the Book of Common Prayer is an excision of many many saints' days and feasts, uh, favoring those of saints who are in the the New Testament and eliminating the reading of the lives of the saints in place of Holy Scripture at uh, the Mass. Uh, that was uh, a few of the major changes made by the Anglican Church uh, in uh, opposition to common practices, what I assume were common practices at the time. Uh, so, uh, a fond thing, vainly invented, um, repugnant to the Word of God. Let's talk a little bit about that. Let's first go to, uh, because of course, the week following the release of this includes not just Halloween, but All Saints Day. Let's go right to that. All Saints, November 1st. This feast dates back to the 7th century and the occasion of its introduction, the conversion of the ancient pantheon at Rome into a Christian church, etc. Here, this book has saints days for all the days of the year and is an interesting tour through Christians who are considered saints, martyrs, and the like throughout all of Christian history with uh, illustrations. One thing I found interesting is uh, on each of these saints' days, so for instance here we have 
uh, one that occurred this past week, St. Demetrius Martyr, October 26th. Um, and all the saints' days are laid out very in a very similar way. They give a description of the life of the saint, the times they were living in. Um, and then at the end of all the description, there's a prayer, a collect, if you will, uh, that uh, is attached to that saint's day. Here we have Almighty and ever-living God. You enabled St. Demetrius to fight for justice even unto death. Through his help, grant that we may tolerate all adversity and hasten with all our might to you who alone are life. Amen. So, and uh, all the prayers follow pretty much this pattern. The prayers are addressed to Almighty God or God, Light and Shepherd of Souls. You established St. Wolfgang, etc., God, maintaining your people, that spirit which you inspire in your bishop, St. Charles, etc. So, all the prayers are addressed to Almighty God, or some variation thereof. And invoke the intercession of the saint in question. Through his help, grant that we may tolerate all adversity and hasten with all our might to you who alone are life. Amen. St. Sylvia. God, you gladden us each year by the feast of St. Sylvia. Grant that as we honor her in such festivities, we may also imitate her example in our conduct. Amen. So, repugnant to the word of God? Um, that seems a bit harsh for what I see going on here in this book. Now, I don't know if all of the Lives of Saints books uh, are structured this way. These prayers are obviously updated in some way to more modern language. Uh, so I don't know what a century-old or centuries-old Life of the Saints book would look like in terms of its prayers. Maybe you who are um, Catholic that... Uh, are more familiar can educate me on this. Um, but I was expecting something different. In, in fact, in, rather than an intercession of the saints, it appears these prayers are asking for God's intercession <laughs> toward the saints. I, it's, it's kind of a reverse from what I was, what I was expecting. Um, but anyway, interesting book. Um, so, Protestant Church, certainly my faith tradition, the Church of the Nazarene through Methodism, uh, ultimately from Anglicanism, we don't talk much about the saints anymore. The Church triumphant, as it were, the topic of the, the saints doesn't come up that often in my branch of Protestantism. And I think in, in Protestantism, at large, but one wonders if there isn't a um, a hole that uh, has developed that we fill with other things. For instance, in my church, the Church of the Nazarene, and I suspect in other Protestant denominations, we have something that we call missionary books. And in the Church of the Nazarene, it's usually we get a new one every quarter or so, and. Um, I used to be much more knowledgeable about this than I am now because I haven't read one for a while, but we would get a new one and we'd sort of pass it around where someone would read it and then pass it on to the next person on the waiting list who's waiting for that missionary book. And they tended to cover missionaries, uh, Protestant missionaries especially, and um, if they happen to be connected to the Wesleyan tradition, all the better. But they would describe their work in some far-flung place on the earth and they were, you know, meant to be pretty exciting reads. And they they were. It was interesting to read. Uh, and I learned a lot about the missions of the church that way. But they tended to focus on things happening in the last hundred years, primarily. Um, is that a replacement for the lives of the saints? Are we just refocusing our attention on another type of saint uh, because we were convinced that the if we talked about the traditional saints of the church going back to the first, second, and third centuries, 
um, that was repugnant to the word of God. I wonder. Um, and certainly other branches of the church uh, have a similar replacement, as it were. Here we have the Anabaptist uh, Martyr's Mirror, the book that will not fit on screen because it's too ginormous. Massive, massive book, popular among Anabaptists, and is primarily, as the name suggests, focused on the martyrs of the church and martyrs primarily of the Anabaptist church. Although it certainly begins with uh, first and second century um, martyrs and, and uh, witnesses to the faith. Um, we've got well over a thousand, eleven hundred plus pages of dense text and gruesome lithographs. That one's not particularly gruesome, but some of them get uh, pretty dark. <clears throat> a replacement for lives of the saints. Now, there's certainly no asking for the intercession of these martyrs, I'm certain, in this book. And from the English church prior to the Reformation, here we have Big Blue, uh, the book that uh, recommended by my neighbor Dale. In addition to being a service book, has... Uh, a large section dedicated to the saints and like lives of the saints. Uh, you can go to the specific date and read up on the saint for that day. No gruesome woodcuts here. And of course, Fox's Book of Martyrs. Uh, here we have it, a tiny abridged version in paperbacks you can carry along with you on the bus as you head to work and read up on the persecution of the church throughout the ages. And this tends to focus primarily on Puritan martyrs. So what I find interesting is um, thinking about the church triumphant in paradise, um, some of which are in this book. Some of which are in this book. And when you read about it, some of the ones in this book were martyred by some of the ones in this book or those following the lives of some of the ones in this book. And it's just uh, fun to me to imagine the great hereafter in paradise around the throne of God, martyrs from the Anabaptist movement and the Rome, the church in Rome, um, singing hymns together. As somebody once said, ain't that a kick in the head? Anyway, so when we talk about the great cloud of witnesses, um, surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, is that something that is essential to the life of a Christian, to have lives that have gone before that we venerate, that we seek to emulate, and when we excise things like the lives of the saints because we are afraid of going too far in the direction of seeking their intercession. Do we lose something in the process, something that we then have to fill with something else? My missionary books, gruesome woodcuts and the like. What do you think? Um, neat little book. Glad I found it because it got me thinking about the saints and their place in the church universal like to know what you have to say, as long as you're keeping it kind. I always appreciate you stopping by and watching. Hope to see you here again next time.